Hello, my name is Dawn Lazert, and I'm very pleased and honored to be here sharing some pre preliminary findings of my dissertation. Thank you to the World Down Syndrome uh, Conference in Dubai and all of the volunteers behind the scenes for uh, providing this forum. The title of my dissertation is Amplifying Voices, Post-Secondary Education Experiences of Students with Down Syndrome. Again, these are preliminary research findings. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto, and that is OISE, which is the Ontario Institute for Education Studies. The presentation outline, uh, I'll be sharing my background, the purpose, methods, case study examples, and preliminary findings. I'll draw your attention to this um, graphic here of a child with Down syndrome created by the artist um, Shai Youssef. I do have the reference um, website for his gallery at the end of this presentation. But this uh, particular portrait was commissioned by the National Down Syndrome Society for one of their campaigns. Assalamu alaikum. My background, I'm a mother, a researcher, mother of three, a researcher an advocate, especially for um, the, the Down syndrome population. I am an educator and an elementary vice principal for a K-8 school uh, near Toronto, Canada. The background, the why for my research is my daughter, Trinity. And um, Trinity is 15 and, um, and full of uh, life and, and love of learning. And so um, this is, definitely dedicated to her in hopes that she continues to, um, to reach for the stars. The purpose of my academic um, research is to amplify the voices of students with Down syndrome, increase an awareness of the abilities to, um, to attend post-secondary education. We know that, um, you know, 50 years ago, if we, if parents had a child born with uh, Down syndrome, they might have been told to um, to put it up for adoption or take it to uh, the baby to an institution. So this is a relative, relatively new phenomena of our, our students with Down syndrome going to post-secondary education. It's also to increase the awareness of the opportunities and um, to instill hope, especially for our new parents who may not be aware of these opportunities and abilities, especially in some of the, the negative um, deficit uh, labels that um, may be given to, to new parents, um, that your child may not be able to walk, your child may not be able to talk, your child may not have friends, may not be able to read, all of these things that I, I think um, parents with Down syndrome might have experienced at one point in their um, their child raising. So it's to bring academic rigor and academic um, evidence-based research um, that is asset-based and to, to show again the abilities and the opportunities available for our, uh, our children with Down syndrome. So the, the methods, just gonna move that in case it's in the way, there we go. Um, it's a qualitative research study and it's uh, rooted in critical disability studies and education uh, as the theoretical framework. I am using a, a case study within a case study approach. And um, at the time of this recording, which is October the 22nd, I had conducted 24 interviews, just over half of my sample size, and um, that uh, it's been overwhelming, the response. It's been f fantastic. I've uh, had so many people um, asking to be part of the study, and um, they, are, they are lengthy interviews. Uh, the parents, well, are, are anywhere from 45 minutes to over an hour, depending on the the discussion, they're one-to-one -one using uh, video conferencing. And um, the when I'm interviewing students with Down syndrome, 
it's around 30 uh, minutes um, with them. And, and it's been wonderful with the digital literacy that uh, so many people know how to use um, the video conferencing platform. And, and in my case, I used Google Meet. My research question, uh, questions is posted there. Um, what are the supports, the barriers, and perceived benefits of a post-secondary education experience for students with Down syndrome? And uh, participants, um, primarily at students with Down syndrome who are attending or have attended a post-secondary ed um, education institution. It doesn't have to be college or university, it could be vocational but um, my participants so far have been college or university, and uh, they're from the US and Canada. I've also interviewed parents of students with Down syndrome who are attending or have attended a post-secondary institution. And um, these are not necessarily parents um, of students I've interviewed. Um, some students have um, just emailed me and said, I want to um, be part of the study and I don't interview their parents. So, and it could be vice versa too. I'm also seeking to, um, it's a smaller sample size, but interview um, other students or parents of uh, adult children who did not attend or who attempted to get in, but the application process uh, was a barrier to them. So um, getting some insight into that, um, that experience. A smaller sample size as well is um, interviewing agencies and advocates who have um, a stake in and um, helping um, students attend a, a post secondary institution or helping them um, afterwards um, in, in terms of uh, job placement. Um, I'm doing a, a cross analysis of all of the post secondary institutions that these students have gone to, but that's a a website analysis. I'm, I'm not interviewing the um, post-secondary institutions. Um, so I wanted to. Uh, the best part of um, of the research for me is is listening to the the personal stories and and having that privilege of um, people being really honest with me and um, sharing uh, just. Their, their world from students to to uh, parents. So uh, I've got a couple of um, case study examples I wanted to share with you. So these two, male and female, female on the left, male on the right. Um, so the female on the, the left, both of these people attended um, what we, we might say as mainstream university. They were not in an inclusive um, uh, education program. Um, they attended with neurotypical learners and attended all of the academic classes that neurotypical learners attended to achieve um, a degree at the end. So the, the female on the left, um, she was very tech savvy. She, you talk about the independence that a, a, this kind of experience gives you. And she was using DoorDash, which is a, a food to door um, a delivery program, Uber, which um, is uh, a ride program like taxis for those that aren't familiar. She lived on campus for three years and is now on campus uh, campus apartment. So she cooks her own meals and grocery shops. And one of the neat things is that she orchestrated the campus apartment all on her own. She worked um, uh, on campus in, in a housing service and she knew when those campus apartments were coming up she got the application, she applied on time, and so a, a tree, a testament to her um, individualness, her independence, and uh, being responsible. She's super organized, uses Google Calendar, loves her timetables, studies the all the course uh, curriculum coming up, and she's had paid jobs throughout university. Just a, a delight to, to listen to her story. Um, on the right is a male who graduated um, with a high school diploma. He was not in a self-contained class in elementary or high school. He also achieved, um, uh, was uh, awarded for um, his high GPA in high school. He didn't have an IEP, which is an individual education plan. 
He is now earning a university degree with a double major in theology and philosophy and a minor in music. He lives on campus. He reads, studies, and writes in Latin um, for part of his course, and he navigates the airport on his own when he goes to visit his parents. Two other examples of students um, I've had the privilege to, to meet and, and listen to. Um, these two uh, took a two-year inclusive community college program. So that was a, a program specifically, specifically oriented to students with intellectual disability. So um, not just Down syndrome, but other um, ID such as um, autism um, or a global delay. So uh, the person on the right, a female, uh, I've included uh, more quotes on these, but just loved uh, uh, summarizing how they felt. So um, best experience ever. She lived on campus. I learned to be more like an adult. College helped me with my dreams to work in hospitality. Her advice to other students, join clubs, make new friends and take one day at a time. And she went on to say, you know, don't just stay in your dorm at night, get out and, and, and do all of the social events. The email on the right um, attended a community college program as well. He said, it was so much fun. The people are amazing. I was nervous at first. I met a buddy and he helped me. I learned to be responsible and independent. I took the bus um, on my own to a job until the pandemic hit. So the thing that I draw your attention to is with these, these four case studies, you could read these and it doesn't say, you know, a big neon sign down syndrome wrote this. This could be any individual that attended college or university. Again, some of my pre preliminary findings um, for post-secondary students with down syndrome. So, some of the trends and patterns that um, I've been um, uh, collating um, from my interviews so far. So the support, so receiving no takers, so people that went to class and usually volunteer students, or they had some sort of stipend um, provided, especially um, our the athletic um, scholarship uh, students would take notes for the students. Um, dorm supervisors, they said, were a tremendous support. So the resident um, supervisors checking and making sure everything's fine. And mentors, um, most of the students I talked to always met with someone during the week to check in to say how the classes were going. Some of the barriers and obstacles, um, one quote, some classes are difficult. And I did hear this from um, the students I interviewed that were in a mainstream uh, education program. Um, a lot in COVID, uh, COVID impacting extracurricular social events um, were important, but that um, all, all of those clubs were shut down due to the pandemic. And um, the students I interviewed so far were, were sad when they had to go home and quarantine either from um, a close exposure or during the, um, especially in 2020, when um, everything was shut down and uh, um, continuing on and, and a lot of classes were virtual. So most people went home. Um, the perceived benefits, and I say perceived because some of the students um, are still in the midst of their post-secondary experience. Some I have interviewed and there's definitely a benefit with jobs, but. Um, however, that's the title I've given this. Uh, fun and friends, definitely number number one. I get to make my own decisions. I heard that a lot, especially when it came to curfew. I lost weight because I was eating good things and exercising a lot. After I graduate, I have I have to get a job that clicks with me. So uh, very much thinking about um, this experience, giving them job skills and through internships, and uh, job opportunities. Again, that was thwarted a bit with, with COVID. Feeling independent, I am proud of myself. So many people uh, said that. I solved a problem in my dorm room. I, I love this story. So the student had a plug toilet and um, 
she went to the resident supervisor they weren't there so she group chatted the people on her her dorm floor and said does anybody have a plunger and somebody gave her a plunger and then she went and watched a youtube video on how to unplug a toilet and did it herself so problem solving independence responsibility all of those great things advice that students with down syndrome would give to other students considering a post-secondary education uh, one gentleman said it's up to them if the kids want to go just try it college is like a family another person said anything is possible and uh, another person said just have fun with it some preliminary findings from parents of students with down syndrome attending post-secondary education supports again mentors peer mentors note takers double testing time and dorm supports were named barriers and obstacles um, the fact that there was no more iap that some faculty um, working with their students just had no idea about working with students with special needs and so in elementary and high school we uh, we have the individual education plan and so the, the goal setting is there and, and parents and students and teachers are very much involved in that so um, it was uh, for some of the parents a little bit of um, a, a disappointment and then that didn't continue and, and that the faculty didn't always want the parent advice when they had to intervene on behalf of of their child if they felt there was an undue uh, bias in place. Some parents, um, for that reason, said that the attitudes of the faculty um, were a little bit um, uh, biased in, the, in their opinion. And two, um, two students, when they got to their dorm, they had a roommate, but uh, within a day, one um, student with Down syndrome didn't have a roommate, that person had left, and another one, that person had left within a couple of days. So parents reading between the lines um, was uh, were looking at uh, the attitudes of, of the students just didn't want to be um, in a dorm and have a roommate with Down syndrome. Funding has been an obstacle, a lot of paperwork, and parents cited that um, you need to get on that. There's a lot of time involved in finding things and um, again uh, there are so many um, opportunities out there but some of the scholarships are definitely um, key to a, a high gpa um, high school diploma and um, full-time course enrollment so most of our students with down syndrome were not taking full-time courses because it was too much so looking at other um, avenues, uh, grants and bursaries, Ruby's Rainbow, which I will name at the end, is a, a nonprofit organization in the United States started by a mother with Down syndrome. And uh, the great thing about that model is that there's no course load requirement, there's no GPA requirement, and it's, it's um, targeted to students with Down syndrome. Literacy, communication skills, fostering those in elementary and high school. So, so important to read to your child, to have those uh, conversational um, big vocabulary words um, with students. And the impact of COVID, the COVID pandemic certainly has been an obstacle and, and barrier. A lot of parents cited seeing their kids very sad when they had to, to move home or when clubs were closed. Perceived benefits, college experience, definitely. The independence, the problem solving, responsibility, self confidence was named with every parent. They saw such a rise in the, their child's self confidence. The social circles were expanding, employment skills were gained, and life skills as well. The advice that parents would give to other parents that I interviewed is let go. Let your child take the risk, let them make mistakes, let them figure out the problem solving as hard as that is to do it uh it's a good time to start if if it hasn't been started um give them the independence uh again start the the literacy early and nurture that um it can be a barrier literacy in terms of the uh, reading grade reading level trying to get in um, um 
to college and university, um, being able to read articles or textbooks. Of course, there's lots of digital resources like uh, Google Read and Write, but there's still an expectation that there be a baseline for literacy. Communication, again, the um, one of the first things for the application process is not only the written, but an interview. So um, working on those uh, public speaking skills and, and conversational skills. If you can work on volunteerism and jobs in um, starting even in elementary and in high school, those are really great skills for students to take with them to post-secondary. And research early, network, network with other parents, get involved in your Down syndrome chapters, um, the national associations, Think College, tremendous resource in the US, even if you don't live there, you can see what kinds of, of models and programs are available. So here are some references, obviously not comprehensive in my dissertation, here's close to 100, but some key ones just to point out um, different things. And there's the Shai Yusuf um, His Gallery. Um, website and some recommended websites. There's the Think College, which is, um, there is a textbook and a Facebook page, uh, great resources on inclusive programs in the US, the Canadian Down Syndrome Society, the National Down Syndrome Society in the US, and Ruby's Rainbow if you're looking for a model to help um, uh, start or even donating uh, to that cause. So Shukran, uh, thank you, merci beaucoup, Jean Miigwech, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, sharing a little bit about my preliminary findings, and I believe um, there is a little bit of time for questions, but uh, this is pre-recorded, so I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, join you in real time. Thank you.